It's a quote by Soren Kierkegaard, Kierkegaard who said that life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. And what I want to ask you is what thing in your life at age 20 uh, was perplexing and, uh, and then makes sense now through the lens of time, experience, wisdom. You know, I always say science means knowledge. It doesn't mean wisdom. So now that you've accumulated wisdom, what thing would you tell your 20 year old self uh, that seemed impossible and then venturing into the impossible uh, gave you clarity uh, in, into the reality of this aspect of your nature? Well, it's, it's going to be very, it's going to sound very specific, but it actually governs all of our lives. Um, I was astounded by the brutality, indifference, cruelty of my elders. And I did not understand the extent to which the entire world changed in the early 1970s in a structural fashion. Mm. There is now a website. I, I wouldn't put it at exactly 1971. But sometime between 1971 and 1973, the world changed character in a way that can be easily seen. I think it's called WTF happened in 1971, if you want an introduction to somebody else's version. I did not understand that my entire life as an adult would be lived in a bubble dominated by two generations that cannot come to grips with the fact that the world changed structurally um, and punishing those of us who came after them forcing us to live in a simulation of the world before 1971 through 73 uh, that we are eventually going to have to pay for. And mm. for example, when I started working for Peter Thiel, who was a guy who has many of my opposite characteristics, you'd never think we'd get along, but he's slightly younger than me by a year or two. And I always thought I had a problem with authority and I thought I had a problem working for other people. And more or less, we've gotten on great for seven years. And the reason in part is, is that I'd only worked for people considerably older than I was or under. And I realized that this is just a very serious dividing line and that this, this bubble, which began initially um, in the fall of 1945 when World War II ended and ended, I think, on February 19th of this year, 2020, when the market figured out that Corona was going to be a big deal. It's been a 75 year interruption of reality. And in particular, the power nap was between 1945 and 1970 through 73. And the rest of the time after the interregnum from 73 on has been this bubble of complete unreality. And I think most people that I know don't realize that they've grown up in the Truman Show. It's a universal Truman Show, and it's cracking now. This is the end of it. Mm. And so, you know, an interesting example inside of the university system is look at the career of Norman Steenrod on the Math Genealogy Project, a guy who advised his last advisee in 1972, right when this thing changed. And all of his students go on to become professors. It's impossible for everybody to train professors to become professors and to have 20 students, but you start <laughs> 20 to higher and higher powers and you see the explosion. And so in essence, we have been growing up in a simulation of a world we have never seen. And the intergenerational stuff is so far thrown off that we are actually considering having an election between a 70 a four-year-old man and a 77-year-old man when previously, you know, Ronald, before Trump, Ronald Reagan was the oldest president ever to take uh, the oath at inauguration was 69. This is not believable. And if we do not realize that we are going to have to pay the bills of our grandparents and parents, and we have no resources to do it, we are spinning out of control. It is time to recognize as much as we love these people, they have led us into a very dangerous place, far away from reality. We found out that we don't manufacture our own masks. We can't get tests. We don't have reagent. We are sitting ducks. There is no government effective. There is no ability to convene smart people. There's no 
place that we can we can have a, a Manhattan project for anything because we can't have smart people asking questions because everyone's too busy looting. So I think that this concept of Babylon that we live in comes from a change in growth regime that happened between let's say 1971 through 73. And just like the period between 1952 and 54, where you have DNA and the hydrogen bomb, everything changes sometimes over a tiny period of years. So if I, if I asked myself when I was growing up, why are these old people so horrible? I would have understood that what happened was that they've been locked into a Ponzi scheme, which is structural, and they weren't courageous enough to stop it and that it wasn't coming out of personal cruelty, it was coming out of the fact that they just couldn't imagine that they should live in any different circumstances than they did. So I'll point out that that site is, uh, WTF happened in 1971, and I know that one of the things that happened is very important to me because that's the year I was born. So it's not listed on the chart, but uh, it was uh, it has some importance to me. Well, also and, the standard model more or less got it put in place, and I don't That's, the that's right. And some date that as, you know, sort of a, controversially speaking as, you know, kind of the end of, of, the, uh, of the high growth period. Now, I mean, what you're saying is in direct opposition to a guest I had on recently, Peter Diamandis, who kind of views, you know, the future is getting rosier all the time, along with his friend Ray Kurzweil and the so-called popularizer of the singularity hypothesis, that we're going into this realm of abundance. And, and you've heard this in the uh, he speaks in the material world. You've heard this from Steven Pinker and even Michael Shermer uh, and in terms of you know, the better angels of our nature and, uh, and rationality now <clears throat> and et cetera. And I wonder you know, how you react to those you know, hypotheses that basically are you know, c conjecturing something completely opposite that seems that oh, it's life- It's very, sim very mm -hmm. simple. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a potential energy term, you don't get conservation of energy inside of a physical system. If you don't have a potential horror term, I guarantee you everything is getting better as, Mr., as Dr. Pinker says. But the problem is that the singularity already happened. It was predicted by Derek DeSola Price at Yale in around 1959. It came true in about 1971 through 73. It wasn't the singularity that Diamand Diamandis Kurzweil uh, are talking about. And Pinker can be explained by making sure that you neglect uh, the fact that the potential horror has, um, is the conversion of kinetic horror. So yes, it appears that there is a weird free lunch. But if you'll think about the blast radius of a hydrogen device uh, superimposed on your favorite metropolitan area, uh, you will find that, in fact, um, there is a price to be paid for this peace and this prosperity. Mm. Yeah, you've talked about the cell and the atom and these two different um, <clears throat> twin you know, nuclei problem. Yeah, the twin. And nuclei. you know the problem is is that Pinker will appear to be right until the object is impressed upon him. And as my friend Nassim Taleb uh, is fond of saying, the farmer is awfully good to the turkey uh, right up through the end of November. 